YouTube, what's up? Back again for another daily fishing video here on Andrew Upshaw Fishing. A little update on what's going on. We're in the process of moving, so it is a lot of stuff going on. So some of these videos are maybe a little delayed, and, and I might miss a day from time to time. I've got a ton of stuff going on in the next week, so just be prepared. If I do miss one, I do apologize. But uh, I know once we get everything situated, everything's going to kick off and be really, really smooth. So really looking forward to that. But on the way down here, I was sitting there thinking, I mean, because when I drive, I don't watch anything, I don't listen to music, I don't do anything like that. I just think. Um, and most of the time it's because I don't really have any other quiet time other than when I'm behind a steering wheel. And I've had, and I've kind of went through a few questions that I've had on, on Instagram, Messenger, on YouTube, and things like that especially from the younger generation, trying to get into bass fishing. And today we're going to address a little bit of that, but we're also going to talk about how experience and people who have fished for a really long time actually hinders their performance. And that's part of the reason you see this younger generation doing so well. We're going to really dive into that. So we're going to dive into, does experience really matter? Or is it more of a who keeps the best open mind so we're going to dive into that here today if you haven't yet hit that sub button in the bottom right hand corner and comment below what do you think matters do you think you need to have more experience or do you think that being better with your electronics is more effective make sure you drop that below i hope you all enjoy this video a little bit of controversy but I, I truly believe it will help the younger generation understand and be more accepting and uh more comfortable making the dive into bass fishing. I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you here in just a second. All right guys, so as you can tell, I'm just laid back, just relaxed today. Uh, but today's topic of discussion is gonna be about experience and how some of these anglers are being so successful without the experience of a 30 or 40 year old veteran well let me put it to you like this because I, I, I had i've had a few comments lately uh that i've read and, and they've said something like well you've only been fishing for like 10 years or 12 years professionally whatever it is and um you know there's other guys out there that have 20 30 40 years of experience with that i will agree they do have more experience than me they have fished more bodies of water more than likely than I have. I mean, when you add that many years, yeah, of course. They've been to places five, six, seven, eight times. But what I will say to this, and this is for all you young anglers out there, experience does help you. Uh, I probably wouldn't have won Cherokee without experience. I would not have won Cumberland without some experience and understanding how smallmouth move. But experience also can be a crutch. Um... Let's just date back 1974 when Tommy Martin won the Bassmasters Classic, won it the winter spinnerbait. Do you believe that you can go catch the same bass to this day doing the exact same thing that he did in 1974? Absolutely not. The fish have gotten conditioned. They've got, they've changed. Everything has changed since then. We've got better reels, better rods, better boats, better electronics, uh, more high-tech equipment as far as like baits, all kinds of new techniques. The day and age is just going down the bank and just throwing a spinner bait is not the same as it was 25 years ago. You can't just go fish everywhere and expect to catch them. It's just not how it works anymore. Although there are certain situations like when they're spawning, can you go throw a Texas or a Glizzard going down the bank? Absolutely. So th somebody that's professionally fished for 30 years, are they better or worse than they were before Let, let's put it to you like this a angler is better if they're willing to adapt the anglers that were really great 30 years ago the reason they were so good is because they were always willing to adapt and try new things and go against the grain specifically like so for instance you know i remember those guys are you know, reading back on some of the guys back in the 70s like they were some of the first guys to even have a spinnerbait you know, look at Paul Lice. He broke records. He won a classic. Mark Davis going out there deep cranking when everybody wanted to fish the bank. They always went went against the grain to win tournaments. So that's what I'm talking about here. You look at guys like Jacob Wheeler, uh, Dustin Connell. Um, I mean, God, that's just a couple. Um, 
Patrick Walters using live scope. Uh, these guys, Jordan Lee, I mean, good Lord, look at what Jordan Lee has done. I mean, he's a young guy. He went to college with me. I mean, we went to college at the same time. These guys have the ability to adapt and to continually try new things. Uh, you know, and, and I'm not just saying that, that the older generation doesn't try new things, but I've even caught myself sometimes, I'll get caught up in things that I did in the past, and it will kind of overshadow what I should be focused on right now. So I'll say, okay, I went to Cumberland three years ago, and I caught him on a spinnerbait really good. It was pre-spawn, but this is kind of the same condition, and I'll try to justify what I did before and try to force a bike that didn't exist when a guy like Jordan Lee or Wheeler or some of these younger dudes that are just absolutely killing it are going to be like, all right, I've never been here before, but I saw like four on live scope over there and I caught one as a four pounder and it was on the side of a point and maybe I'll just run some more sides of points and it works and they're catching them. They're going against the grain of what we have been taught for 30 or 40 years. They're going completely against it and that's how they're being successful. So for all you younger generation guys or the least experienced guys, and some of you are those people on here. I mean, I get comments all the time saying, well, I just bought my first boat or this is the first time I fished a tournament or, you know, I'm, I'm in college and I'm trying to work my way up. Hey, there's hope for all of us, guys. Just because a guy has fished for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, whatever, just because a guy has that much experience does not mean that you can't go out there and compete with him. That's what's so fantastic about bass fishing is that it's all about the lake you're on, the attitude you have, and the willingness that you have to adapt to your conditions. The better we can adapt to our conditions, the better off we can be. So for all these guys that are telling you, like, this is how you have to uh, throw this bait or fish this technique because this is how I did it 25 years ago, I'm not saying they're wrong by any means because at that particular time, it worked. I mean, I'll give you a perfect example, guys. I remember when jerkbait fishing, like true jerkbait fishing, was a lost art. Like it was, there was only a handful of like fantastic jerkbait fishermen. This all pre live scope, okay? So when you had to weight your jerkbait and you had to like do all these little tweaks to it, you had to put red hooks on it, you had to do all these little things, your line had to be perfect, your rod had to be perfect. And there's guys out there that absolutely mastered that. I mean, they were fantastic at it. Uh, I mean, look at Kevin Van Dam. Randy Blockett is one of those guys. I mean, he he was a fantastic jerkbait fisherman. I mean, the guy knows has forgotten more about jerkbaits than, than I'll ever know. But, guys, that isn't how it is anymore. I mean, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but, like, a guy doesn't have to go out there and weight a jerkbait in the tail and make it sit just right. LifeScope has proven to us that, A, they eat a jerkbait year-round, and B, it has more to do with how you twitch your bait in front of a fish than it has to do with how the bait's sitting in the water. Because quite frankly, if I can see that fish out there 40 feet and I know exactly where he's sitting and I jerk my jerk bait down there, if I do the right cadence or something right in front of him, he's probably going to eat it. And that's a, taking a stock KVD jerk bait, shallow diver, deep diver, whatever the depth of fish is at, with stock hooks, not waiting it at any level, putting it on 15-pound line and casting out there, reeling it down, jerking it, and I'll catch that fish. This proves basically everything we've ever known about jerk baits. I remember when, if you went out and got seven or eight, nine bites on a jerk bait in January or February, you were doing pretty darn good. You were, have, you might even have a good tournament. Guys, there's guys going out there now and catching 40, 50, 60 fish on a jerk bait like it's nothing. I say all of this to say that for all you young guys, there's hope. Experience matters, and there's going to be certain times that experience is going to play better than technology. 100%. Look at Bill Lowen winning, Jason Christie winning at the Sabine River. But, guys, the technology, the more you can adapt, if I can give you any advice for any young guys or any guys that are just trying to get into bass fishing, Learn your electronics. Try to stay ahead of the curve. Don't be afraid to tinker with your baits. Don't be afraid to sit there and say, okay, everybody out there is doing this. I'm going to go do something a little bit different. Try to aim to be a little different. Don't always just try to go out there and do the exact same thing everybody else is doing because nine times out of ten, you can't repeat success of others. 
You can only make your own success by doing it your own way. That doesn't. That means not always, you know, doing what I tell you to do, doing what everybody else tells you. You've got to pave it your own way. You've got to do it yourself. But at the same time, you can learn from everybody else's mistakes. Guys, if anything you learn from my channel, always try to be different. Always try to be innovative and don't go against the grain. Don't be afraid to go against the grain because sometimes going against the grain can be the biggest payday. Sometimes it'll be the biggest loss. It's kind of like swinging for the fence, but in a more like calculated way. And never stop, never, never stop learning more about your trade. Because the more you settle, the more you look back at 20 years ago and say, hey, I, look, I, I used to catch them like that all the time, the worse you're going to be. I just take my word for it. I've been there. I've done it. 12 years ago, I remember coming out on these points on, on, uh, out in front of my parents' house, throwing a weightless Senko, and I could catch as many fish as I wanted to catch. If I went out there and did that right now, I wouldn't catch crap. So the fact is, is things have changed over time. Fish have changed. Fish movements have changed because of boat pressure and everything else. So guys, stay hungry. Learn more about fishing. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next one.